Welcome to the EMS video series. EMS is capable of handling many applications like circuit boards, motors, transformers, lifting machines, solar cells, power lines, shields, moving magnet generators, and many more. It could be useful for different sectors like electromechanical, electromagnetic, power electronic, and electromagnetic behavior. EMS is powerful, accurate, and easy to use. It is the only electromagnetic solution fully integrated in SOLIDWORKS. Therefore, the user can focus on the design and not on the CAD. EMS is a gold certified product and it's fully embedded in SOLIDWORKS. Therefore, you don't have to worry about importing and exporting hassle. In this example, we need to design a housing for an electronic circuit board. EMS is the perfect tool for that. Designers need to install a fan and some slots for cooling. However, this will lead to a significant amount of radiation. The radiation should not exceed the maximum amount allowed by regulations. The designer needs to make the appropriate compromise between cooling the circuit and controlling its radiation. For that reason, we will need to know exactly how much radiation is coming out of the slots and we will also need to know the exact temperature of the circuit. One of the major advantages of EMS is that the thermal simulator is fully integrated in EMS. Thermal analysis is calculated based on the Joule effect, therefore there is no need for you to calculate it and import it from outside. It is automatically done internally. We will get into this in more details later. As we can see here, our structure is composed of several components. The enclosure, the main chip, a heat sink, a motherboard, a power supply, several small chips, a cooling fan, and several ventilation slots. We will run an AC current through the circuit. We will study its thermal and radiation behavior. We start by creating an EMS design scenario. In here, you can choose the analysis type. In today's example, we are interested in the thermal and radiation behavior due to an AC current. Therefore, we will choose AC magnetics. We specify the frequency, and since we are interested in thermal behavior, we couple the simulation with a steady state thermal analysis. Now that the study is created, EMS generates for us a manager tree. For those of you who are familiar with the SOLIDWORKS simulator, our manager tree is very similar to the SOLIDWORKS manager tree. As you can see here, in the manager tree we have solids. This is where we have all the components of our structure. We have load restraint. This is where we can define the boundary condition. We have coils. This is where we define the excitation currents and voltages. We have forces and torques. This is where we can specify any force of interest that we want to include in our study. Then we have the mesh icon. This is where we can define and control the meshing of our structure. Before we can run any simulation, we need to assign material to the different components. To assign material, we can either choose from the EMS material library, where we have hundreds of materials to choose from, or we can just create our own material. You can even decide to build your own library. As you can see here, once I assign material to a certain component, EMS puts a blue check mark right next to it, saying that this component has a material assigned to it. One of the neat features of EMS is that if you have two components that require the same material, all you need to do is just drag and drop. The second component will acquire the same characteristics as the first one. You can also select several components and assign the same material to them. So you don't have to go through the process over and over again. Once I assign material to all the components, EMS will put a blue check mark on the solids icon. In the load restraint section, we can set up the boundary condition. Since we are interested in the thermal behavior of the structure, and since all the heat due to the joule heating is automatically included, we only need to set up the convection. We can set up the ambient temperature here. The other element we need to take care of is the excitation. Any excited conducting component needs to be assigned a current to. Here we select whether it's a current driven or a voltage driven coil. Select the component, select the entry port, select the exit port. This is the direction of our current. Select the amplitude and we select the phase. 
There is one more pre-analysis step that needs to be done, and that is the meshing. EMS has a very powerful mesher. We can decide on the size of the mesh, either by sliding this cursor or by manually typing in the value. This is how the mesh would look like once it's done. At this point, all the pre-analysis steps have been taken care of, and now we can just run our simulation. Once the simulation is done, EMS generates a rich series of results. Each folder represents a set of results. The lumped quantities table, the magnetic flux density, the magnetic field intensity, the applied current density, the current density which includes the eddy current, the force density, the electric field, the losses density, the flux, the voltage, temperature, temperature gradient, and the heat flux. We can look at the results either in 3D format or in 2D format. If we go for a 3D plot, we can choose which component to plot, the unit, fringes and we can choose whether it's continuous discrete lines or points so this is the magnetic flux density as we can see from this plot the components with high currents have higher flux if we decide to look at the flux inside the structure all we have to do is section clipping and there we can have a look inside the structure and we can see the different values at different locations we can also look at the magnetic flux density in a vector format that way we can have an idea on the exact direction of the vectors and we can zoom in and out and see exactly how vectors behave in different locations. We can also manipulate the size and the density of the vectors. And we can also look at the 2D plot to get an exact value between any two points in the structure. And this is how our magnetic field intensity looks like between the two points that I chose. We have them also in a data format so that they can be exported to any spreadsheet. We can use ISO clipping to locate the max and the min. We can play around with it here. Because we are interested in radiation, we will look at the magnetic field intensity in the air surrounding the structure. As we can see here, we have our air box. It is clear from the scale and the plot we have in front of us that the electric field intensity is small at the far end of the air box. We can use section clipping to take a look inside the box. It is clear that the components with the highest current generate the highest radiation. We can also notice that the slots are leaking significant amount of radiation. We can also use isoclipping to focus on the areas with the highest radiations. It is very clear here that the CPU, the power supply, and the slots have significant amounts of radiation and we need to focus on that for our design. We're also interested in the thermal behavior of the circuit. We can again use section clipping to look inside. We can see here the CPU and the heat sink are the hottest spots in the circuit. We can also use isoclipping to narrow down the maximums. We can decide how many levels we want. We can also take a look at the temperature gradient. Again, the same thing we can do section clipping or uh, we can do uh, 
or we can do ISO clipping. If we want to modify certain parameters and rerun the simulation while keeping this one untouched, we can drag and drop the study. Give it a second name. Now as you can see here, the second study has the exact results and the exact setup of the first one. All we need to do is make any modifications we would want to make to the second study. Then we run only that study and that way we keep the setup and the results of the first one. We just run the second one. We can also decide to run all the studies at the same time. Once I finish the simulation and get all the results I wanted, EMS can help me generate a report that I can share with others. In the report setup wizard, we can choose which section to include and which section to leave out. We can upload the company logo. We can set the author name. We can set the company name. We can choose where we want to save the file can set the background color. We can choose whether or not it's an HTML or a word format. As soon as I hit OK, EMS starts generating the report. Once the report is generated, we end up with something like this. I can save it or share it with anyone. They do not need to have EMS or SOLIDWORKS to view this report. As you can see, all the figures are generated are included in this report. This is it for this demo. If you need any more information or if you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website www.emworks.com. Thank you for watching.